And I just started recording. So thank you all for joining us on this beautiful day. I feel like every time we have a training, it's, it's destined to be this gorgeous, sunny, beautiful spring day outside. So um, thank you for taking time out of your day to join us today to learn about curbside market and the opportunity that exists for farmers markets and our vendors um, to be able to, to sell online. So with that, um, we are going to walk through the basic idea of what curbside is, what the benefits are to you um, as vendors, what, um, the, what you need to participate, all of those pieces, and then also what the, on, the background of the online system looks like. But before we do that, we want to do some welcome and introductions. So um, again, just so you all know, you might hear some of that dinging. People will jump on and jump off as they need to. Please feel free to do that. A recording will be available um, after this training. Um, we'll send that out. So if, if you're a person that's taking lots of notes, don't worry, we'll send the slides, we'll send the recording so you can watch this at a later time as well. Um, and again, put those questions in the chat box. And with that, I want to do, introduce our curbside market project team. So I'm Marie Boyd, I work with Healthy Harvest of North Iowa, and we are the holders of the grants that um, is making this project available to us all. So um, a little bit about us is just that we're a small nonprofit here in North Central Iowa that works to connect and educate in support of the local food system. So what that means could take hours. So we're just gonna keep it short for now, but hopefully a lot of you know of us or has, have worked with us before. If not, I encourage you to check out our website. Um, and with that, I'll pass it over to Andrea to introduce herself. Uh oh, okay, here I come. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Andrea Ebelsizer. Um, I am uh, part of this project because I am the broker for North Iowa Fresh and we have been using the software local food marketplace um, for our uh, multi-farm CSA and wholesale distribution up here in North Iowa. And so um, I'm helping with the project in order to facilitate the um, onboarding of the producers and vendors onto the local food marketplace and also to um, just provide expertise uh, with using the software for this project. Um, in fact, we are partnering with the team, uh, you know, by letting them, I guess, piggyback onto our software subscription to save some costs for if, at least in the introductory couple of years here where we're trying to determine if this project is going to be um, viable long term. Um, it saves some costs in software by sharing it and using it together. And obviously, I'm also part of the Clear Lake Farmers Market. I'm on the board there, so I have a, an interest in seeing that market succeed, and especially in these times, um, providing some new options for vendors um, to find avenues to sell their products. Absolutely, couldn't agree more. <laughs> and we also have our other partners over in the Cedar Fall Waterloo area so through the University of Northern Iowa's local food program. So on the call today is Jody. I will let her introduce herself. Hi everybody, I'm Jody Hickrick and I'm the local food coordinator for the Cedar Valley area. So Blackhawk County, but also an additional um, six, five to six counties surrounding Blackhawk County. Um, and our role with the UNI local food program is very similar to Healthy Harvest is to bring um, people together around local food, connect those local food um, buyers with local food producers. Um, that is my role in terms of this project and being a project manager, manager through this USDA grant. I am also though the market manager for one of the pilot markets, Hellwich Hill Farmers Market. And Jaquan Campbell, some of you on the call know him. Um, he has been a student in the past, and now he's one of our AmeriCorps VISTA members, and he's also working on this project, but he couldn't join us today. Awesome. So um, we can say this project team has been working together for months now, trying to get this up and rolling. So if when, when you hear or see um, our team referred to as the curbside uh, market project team. Those are the folks that you can think of and ask questions to and we do our best to answer those as we go. So um, 
We do want to do a quick roll call as far as who else is on this call so we know who is out there and just real brief, um, we'll go down the line. I have a list in front of me here. I'll call your name and then unmute you. And we'll, if you want to share your name, your business, and what type of products you sell, briefly again, like real quick, um, not too much detail, but uh, just so we know who you are and so everybody else can know who's here. So with that, I have a Kelly Moore. Hi, I'm Kelly Moore. I'm with the CV Pepper people. Uh, we sell hot peppers, heirloom tomatoes, uh, pretty much all summer. We also do some baked goods. Nice, love it, thank you. All right, uh, Steve Otto. Last year there. We can meet you, Steve. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> there we go. I unmuted me locally, but uh, Steve Otto, I'm with Otto's Wood Fired. I make uh, artisanal sourdough bread baked in a wood fired brick oven. Awesome. Fantastic. Thank you. All right, we have Abby Ripe. Forgive me if I pronounce anything wrong. <laughs> All right, can you hear me now? Yes. Uh, it's Abby Rippey. Uh, I am the owner of Blue Ridge Orchard and uh, we sell apples. Yeah, thanks for being on. All right, Betty Klein. And we do cookies and other things. It's a family group thing. So my wife and my sister-in-law, and we work together on the project. Perfect. Thank you. Um, how about Brandon Brown? Oh, let me. Uh, hi, uh, Brandon Brown's Gardens, uh, co-owner. We're off Highway 63 in Waterloo. Owners are Bridget and Lowell. We've been doing it about 55 years, and we do fruits and vegetables. Oh, great. Thank you. We have Brenda. Can I can never say your last name, Brenda. I'm sorry. <laughs> Kenneth? Kenneth. I should know this by now. <laughs> no, that's okay. No problem. So, um, my husband and I own Images Photography, and so we are, we have art studio as far as uh, prints and things like that, local scenes and other things for sale. So, I think we're going to be in with the Art in the Plaza, possibly. That's how I found out about this, but anyway, um, yeah, so we're happy and excited. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Chris Anderson. Hi, I'm the uh, owner of Chris's Kettle Corn. Uh, we got started about a year and a half ago and we got our roots through the Clear Lake Farmer's Market. And we source our not only the oil, but our corn locally uh, down by Doherty. Nice. Thank awesome. you. Thank you, Chris. Um, David Differden. Good afternoon. Uh, my wife and I, Susan, uh, operate Timeless Prairie Orchard in Winthrop, Iowa. We're about 40 minutes uh, east of Waterloo Cedar Falls, right off of Highway 20. Uh, we grow 10 acres of high-density dwarf apple trees and have been selected the best apples in Iowa at the Iowa State Fair. So we're excited about each year entering our products and uh, having introducing new apple varieties to customers. So we enjoy doing that. Wow, all right, congrats and, on that. <laughs> Um, Emily Bedork. Was I muted there? there Emily Dvorak, sorry. <laughs> yep, I work with Jody and Daquan at the UNI Center for Energy and Environmental Education, and I am um, an AmeriCorps VISTA member there, so I work with a couple um, different projects that partner with the farmers market. Fantastic. Thanks for joining us. Thanks. 
uh, Karen Everling. Hi, um, I'm the coordinator for the garden at Embark and we're a nonprofit organization. We work with the refugees from Burma and we're currently in the process of moving our garden and we sold a little bit of our produce at farmer's market last year, but with our expansion, we're looking to do much more. So um, we're excited to see what this is about. Awesome, thanks. Uh, Kelly, we did Matt Prather. Yes, uh, I'm Redshed Lanes uh, Gardens, <clears throat> and I sell a wide variety of produce and some strawberries at the farmers markets. So. Yes, delicious baked goods. <laughs> and, yeah, and some baked goods too. <laughs> All right, how about Sandy? Hannon? I'm terrible at names today. <laughs> Hi there. I'm actually filling in for Jared Farmator. My name is Sandy and I'm with Blackhawk County Health Department. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Sarah Hellislow? Yeah, uh, my name is Sarah Hellislow. I'm with Tri-Pie Bakery for Teen Employment Program for High School Girls and sell fresh baked pie and ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. And we did those. Lisa, what should I, I should have mentioned Lisa. Lisa's part of our project team as well. If you want to introduce yourself. <laughs> Um, Lisa Packer. I'm new to Healthy Harvest, but helping out with Clear Lake Farmers Market as well as the North Iowa or Mason City Farmers Market on marketing and special projects and whatever I can. Happy to be here. Yes, thank you. We're excited you're here. <laughs> and Matt Kohler. Just with, uh, yep, Matt Kohler with uh, uh, Wings and Things that over by Missouri with, uh, you know, we do duck eggs and meat ducks. Thanks. Good to see you. And I think, did I get everybody? Did I miss anybody? Introducing, I think. No? All right. Well, thank you all for joining us. It's exciting to hear just the different perspectives and different business owners that um, are involved in our markets and are interested in this project. So we just like to give a um, give that opportunity. So also, so you guys can get to network a little more too. <laughs> so with that, um, oops, we will jump into the background of the project as a whole. Um, we do have a USDA Farmers Market Promotion Program grant or FMPP grant that is specifically for online sales at farmers markets for curbside pickup. So um, we joke that this, with all this unfortunate circumstances, this was actually really great timing for us because we put the proposal in in June, um, heard about it late last fall and started working on it this winter. Little did we know that online sales would be um, even more important during these um, rare times that we're in. But um, definitely wanted to create a opportunity to expand farmers markets to a different customer base. We know that there's a lot of folks looking for um, convenient online shopping um, that might not have a lot of time to stop at market and wanted to really be able to expand market into that space. So that's where the idea of this online ordering system came from. And um, especially with that curbside delivery component or pickup component really. Um, we will be piloting this for this 2020 season as well as 2021 and um, we'll hope to, as all goes well, hopefully we'll move this into the 2022 season and let it start having its own legs as a permanent offering after that point. Um, but for now we're figuring it out as we go, so we ask for your understanding and support as we do that. Um, the project is aimed at five local farmers markets in year one, which is 2020. 
Um, we're focused on Clear Lake Farmers Market, North Iowa Farmers Market in Mason City, College Hill Farmers Market in Cedar Falls, and Waterloo Urban Farmers Market in, of course, Waterloo. And, and with the goal of adding the Cedar Falls Farmers Market in year two. So those are the markets that we have in this pilot project. I know there's been some great questions previously about adding other markets and we would love to explore that in the future, but um, until we get our feet under us, that's kind of who we're looking at right now. Um, this project has been, uh, we got the name for curbside market is what we're calling it. So when you start seeing promotions based on curbside market, that's, that's us. Um, again, as Andrea kind of alluded to previously, we're building off North Iowa Fresh's success with the local food marketplace system, which is an online order platform, um, especially with COVID, there's a lot of them out there. And we did a significant amount of research going into this as far as identifying the best platform. And we really believe that this is the best one, um, not only because it is used here locally, um, but also there's several food hubs around the state that use it and hopes for what it could look like in the future, as well as some really cool features that make all of our lives easier, like uh, automatically printing pick tickets, which we'll talk about later, and labels and things like that. So um, we're excited for what that looks like um, and really being able to use a system that's specifically built for this purpose. Um, the goals for the project include increasing the number of farmers markets utilizing online sales systems, so we know that some of you maybe are doing online sales already and we're excited for you in that effort, but we know that it's a barrier for a lot of folks as well. So we want to get more farmers and, and business owners involved in online sales. Um, we want to add a broader audience base as I was talking about previously. I mean, knowing that there's a whole bunch of customers um, that would buy local if it was more um, convenient and more easy for them to fit into their lifestyles. Um, we want to get at that audience base. We want to increase local food purchases in North Iowa, as I think a lot of us do, right, with farmers markets in general, but we want to make sure that we continue to increase that demand for local food. We want to continue to support um, the success of our farmers markets. So that was something big that we did not want this project to um, take away from the farmers markets in any way. We want to build on farmers markets and help make them sustainable and viable options for you all as vendors. So um, you'll hear that kind of woven through our messaging, but also when we talk about why farmers or vendors have to be set up at market, it's to make sure that we continue to create that existing um, base and make sure we have nice, vibrant, full markets, um, but that we encourage new vendors to participate in market through participating in curbside. And um, I forgot to link to that. Yes, yeah, so again, reach that new audience of customers and <laughs> make sure that we are reaching new folks through market. So we also wanted to make sure that you knew that um, part of this is trying to take some of the burden off marketing for folks as well, because online sales, if we can drive people through the system, um, it helps all of our vendors as a whole and our farmers markets as a whole. So we're trying to take on some of the work of doing that promotion effort and make sure that our, our everyone is aware that farmers markets are out there and specifically through the curbside market, but just generally markets in general are gonna benefit from that too. So um, some of the methods that we have planned for that include billboards. Um, so d digital and static, although we did joke, there's not as many people on the roads. So, um, we're kind of walking through what that looks like for this year, but it's still important. Um, social media, we know everyone's on social media, so of course we're getting on there. Radio ads, um, we're gonna work on a text service, especially for folks as um, reminders about the carts being open and closed and pick up and all of that good stuff. And um, print media, so this little piece you can see on the screen here, hopefully, is a, an example of that rack card that we created. Um, we'll have additional promotion materials related like that, but at least you can kind of see the design that that's starting to take. Um, and yes, so lots of different promotion avenues to, again, get that different customer base in through this system. So with that, I'm going to pass it over to Jody to talk about some of the benefits that Curbside Market offers our vendors.
Yes. Hi, everybody. Um, Maria already touched on a lot of these, but there's a few more on here. And again, we just wanted to have those benefits all in one spot. Um, again, when we are doing a lot of the talking today, we did submit this grant a year ago. And so we were, you know, really researching and looking at um, new opportunities for farmers markets pre-COVID. So keep that in mind. But again, we also know that the benefit could be even greater with everything going on this particular season. So that opportunity to reach more customers, we did, as part of our research, we did an online survey asking people if they would be interested in an online ordering system at farmer's markets in our area. And there was quite a bit of um, favorable response. People were interested in there. Um, a couple of people even commented, you know, for example, yes, I have young children. Um, Maybe I'm a single parent and I just can't bring all of my children to the market. I don't have anybody to leave them with. I can't make it to farmer's markets. Um, there was different instances when people, um, you know, have health problems and they couldn't get out and walk throughout the market. So finding those customers, again, really reaching those customers that maybe want to support local that for whatever reason, due to time, health, they're not able to attend the farmer's markets. Again, we realize that this year we may be capturing some of our regular farmer's market customers um, with COVID, but again, we really, really wanted to reach more customers for our farmer's markets and our farmer's market vendors. We also know one of the reasons that we started this project is just that continuous um, convenience factor that people are ordering more and more online more and more places are offering the online groceries. And again, um, sometimes it's easier to go with that convenience than it is supporting local. So we wanted to bring those two together and be able to offer that convenience and have people be able to support those local vendors, local producers. Additional opportunities for sales. We all know that there's bad weather days when it comes to farmers markets. And again, while we were trying to target other customers, maybe we're going to reach our current customers that day on a day where the forecast isn't look or people are forecasting ahead. They will have to plan ahead. They won't be able to order online right that day to give you guys time. We'll talk about that. But they may look and say, hey, Saturday's not looking so good or my market day is not looking so good. I'm just going to order my stuff online this week because I know I probably won't make it to the market because I don't like to shop on bad weather days. Just examples. And again, we've thrown out again, people may want to use it. They may want to still support local. They might not feel comfortable for whatever reason coming to the market with COVID-19. This system is going to accept, accept credit cards for you as a vendor. Um, so you don't have to do anything with that piece. We have a, a built into the system. There's something in place that accepts credit cards from um, our customers. And really that's the only way that they can pay at this time. So it's a guaranteed sale with that credit card, but nothing that you have to do on your side as that producer or that vendor. Marie mentioned all the great opportunities for um, marketing. So while we're marketing this project, we're marketing essentially these four farmers markets that are part of this pilot project. So that increased marketing. And we know that all of our markets, we can always have lots of marketing, never too much marketing when it comes to our farmers markets. We're hoping that it helps you guys plan ahead as vendors. So you will have 24 hours to know what has been sold online and hopefully that will help you plan and what you plan to bring to the market. And again, we're gonna talk about all of this as we move forward of what that looks like. All right, so I'm also doing the market um, logistics today too. So as I talk about this, it's just gonna be an overview and then Andrea is going to walk us through the site with a little bit more specific information. However, to get the most specific information, you're going to want to sign up to be part of this project. And then we'll have another additional training in May, getting all those vendors that are part of this up and running on the site. So what will happen first after this training, and I'm going to review this at the end too, is there will be a form for you guys to complete. Um, in the future, there will be membership fees on top of your uh, farmer's market fees to be part of this program. There's a lot of fees associated with it. It's a great um, platform, this online um, local food marketplace, but it does cost money. It does cost money to have staff involved with this project. We will have an extra staff member at each one of the markets. Um, it does cost to accept credit cards, and some of you know that, um, and that's also then built into this, this whole system and this whole project. 
So we want to be able to sustain this project in the future. So in the future, there'll be membership fees, but those are all waived this first year due to our grant funding. Therefore, um, it's a great time to get involved. It's a great time to try it out this year, especially without those additional membership fees. Anybody who is a vendor at our participating markets can be part of this project. I will add to that though, um, we do have to follow farmer's market rules. Um, this is a farmer's market project. So now that the guidelines have come out from the state and the governor about what is allowed at the farmer's markets currently, we are waiting from clarification to make sure that we could sell those products that are non-farm products. So right now we're hoping yes, and we're hoping to get that answer by the end of today, and that will go out with our communication that we send out to you. But hopefully as of now, unless we hear otherwise, anybody who is a paid vendor at a farmer's market, one of these pilot farmer's markets, is allowed to participate in the project. All right, so what it is gonna look like, and just a little bit talking about bagging up your product and labeling your product. And this will make a lot more sense to, um, again, once you've gone through this training and you see the overview of how this works. But vendors are gonna be required to um, properly package all your products. Um, so for example, um, you're going to maybe hopefully have like five or six different customer orders. You're going to know those customers. You're going to know that each, how much each person ordered. You're going to individually bag up those individual orders, but you're going to need something that you're going to drop off then to our curbside tent. And at that curbside tent, when you drop that off, we need to know where that came from. We're going to have one staff member and several people bringing things. So I'll show you here in a minute what a label would look like. You would have a label that you would fill out and put on this box of all the different orders that are gonna be brought to our table. Um, we're gonna keep in mind when you're packaging your products, yes, this is a farmer's market and we're not necessarily, um, you know, that, that retail like a grocery store, but if we're looking at having customers that have never shopped at a farmer's market before, Keep in mind, we have some packaging guidelines as you would get this producer manual that we'll also reference. But keep in mind that you want it to look good because some of the reference that people might have shopping with this curbside market is what they've seen in the grocery store. So you're gonna want it to be, um, your products are gonna be cleaned. They're gonna want to, you're gonna wanna put it in a new clean bag. So not a reused fairway bag, for example, but it's gonna be in a new clean bag that you're gonna package that product into. Then again, you're gonna have hopefully five, six plus orders and you're gonna bring those in a box um, or, or something reusable that you're gonna wanna take back at the end of the market. And then you can go to the next screen, Marie. <laughs> yeah, so then this label then will go on that box of all of those um, customer orders that you would bring to our tent. And then it's our job or our staff member's job then to take all of those and say, um, maybe one customer ordered from five or six different vendors, then they're gonna aggregate that and have a different label and a different packaging system that would actually then go to that customer. Next slide. All right, so here's just a overview in general of what a weekly schedule looks like for this project. Again, each market, based on the day that your market is, we will really um, narrow down those specifics for each market and each vendors participating in those particular markets. But basically, vendors, um, once you're in the system, we'll talk about that, once you're in the system, it's going to be your job on a weekly basis to uh, list which products that you have available. Um, and you're going to have four or five days in advance of your market to do that. And there'll be certain times that you'll want to do that because then customers are going to have a certain window of time that they can get in there and shop. Customers are generally going to be able to shop one to three days before the market. And then that cart, that shopping cart is going to close 24 hours before the market. And you're going to receive a pick ticket of what has been sold. And Andrea will talk about that as she goes through the system. Then you're going to bring all those products to the market and you're going to deliver them. We're going to have a curbside tent, a table, everything all set up. And you need to do that no later than 45 minutes before the market starts. We know this might be different times than what you're usually accustomed to showing up at the market. 
but we feel it's very important that our staff has plenty of time to aggregate all those products because as soon as market starts, then customers can start picking up those orders and we need to have them checked and double checked and be ready to go. So it's a smooth process on the curbside pickup. So our customers are gonna drive on through, they're gonna get those um, orders and you know again it, we're still working through those logistics but we're really looking at that no contact so there'll be no contact between our staff and those people picking up especially this year with the COVID-19. So as you bring again all those orders that you're going to have you bring them to our, our vendor or our curbside tent you're going to want to make sure that you bring it in um, one of like the wax reusable food safe boxes or some kind of a plastic tote something that you can clean out every week and reuse. Um, we don't want our staff members to have a ton of boxes that they have to figure out what to get rid of um, at the end of the market. Um, so if you can just keep that in mind, bring it in something that you can take back at the end of that market and reuse from week to week. All right. Thanks, Jody. So now it would be Andrea's turn to talk about the website and software. All right. So I'm going to walk you through a number of things related to the software. And um, in a couple of minutes, I'm going to share my screen so I can um, show you a little more about um, how the software works and what you would maybe expect once you get um, signed up for this project. So um, the first thing to just remember, we're working in two different regions on this project. So we're working in um, the North Central Iowa region, which will include the Clear Lake and um, North Iowa Farmers Market in Mason City. And those are the ones that are going to be directly partnering with the North Iowa Fresh um, website and the software that we already have been using for no, um, about three years now. Um, so it'll be incorporating the farmers markets into the existing website that already was being used. So when the customers come to our site, um, they're going to have to um, locate the curbside portion of the website to find, you know, the products that are available at those markets. So and I'll walk you through that and kind of what the customer is going to see and then what the um, what the vendor side looks like. So in the Cedar Valley region, um, they are we're working on developing a uh, website that's more specific to their region. So the College Hill and the Waterloo Urban Farmers markets will be using utilizing that system, so they will be going to the same site, and then the customers will be able to choose which markets they want to shop from on that day. And they should be able to go between if they do want to shop both markets, or if they miss, you know, say in Clear Lake, they miss the Clear Lake market, and they want to see what's offering at North Iowa Farmers Market that week, and they might drive over there. Um, they um, definitely can go back and forth. Um, so that it kind of provides flexibility and maybe customers that otherwise wouldn't drive over there not knowing what they might be able to purchase um, might increase customer uh, at customers for all the markets. So um, if you go to the next slide. Um, so I'm gonna, I guess, maybe share my screen here. Um, like Marie mentioned earlier, all these slides are gonna be available to you after the training and so I have kind of the slides are laid out um, as a summary as you go through. Um, if you review them later, you'll be able to review kind of what I talked about. Um, but for now, I'm going to kind of go off the slides and share my screen so I can actually walk you through what um, the sites look like. So here we go. Oh, cannot. Maybe. Now I can, maybe. Here we go. All right. Okay. So, um, does that look, you guys can see Marie? Yes. Okay. So this is our North Iowa Fresh, um, website. And like I mentioned, Cedar Valley is going to have a slightly different look. They'll have, it'll be, um, I, I believe it's green layout and the Cedar Valley logo and things like that. So keep in mind, this is what North Iowa, uh, vendors are going to see. And the other one is going to be slightly different with the actual color scheme, but the options for the most part are going to be the same. And so, like I said, the uh, North Iowa Fresh with our, um, bounty box program, which is aggregated CSA, we've been using this site for a number of years now. And, um, so you'll see both, um, uh, I guess names on here. So we have North Iowa Fresh and then the curbside market. And as we're, um, 
making this project up as we go, so to speak. We are adding stuff in and um, adjusting it to work for both or all the projects together. So um, curbside market, you'll see referenced in some places right now, but be um, assured that the website is gonna go through a little bit of a facelift to get a little more um, clarity for those customers coming in to shop the farmer's market. It's gonna be um, more obvious that, this, that they are in the right place and that it should be sharp shopping on this site. So um, this is, but for now, this is what they're going to see. So uh, across the top here, you'll see different options. Um, the meet your producer tab here gives um, some information. It'll you know, uh, welcome the customers who are North Iowa Fresh. Also talk about the curbside market and um, the market set of participating in that. And then all of the vendors that are participating in curbside will be um, showcased here. So um, we will, if you are participating in the program, we will want um, some thumbnail pictures of your family and your farm. Um, and we'll walk you through that a little more of what kind of pictures, but we always like to have a little representation of who is the face of the product um, on this page. And then as you click into um, some of the vendors or the farmers, you're gonna see a lot more description about their farm, where they are, who they are, um, contact information, some information about that farm and what kind of practices or um, different uh, methods that you're using for creating your or growing or creating your products. So um, we will be asking for pictures of farms, um, logos if you have them and that sort of thing. So you do want to keep in mind, like um, Jody has already said, we're trying to reach an audience that might be um, used to seeing a fairly professional looking website that's um, got a you know, clean look and a lot of and information about the products that they're trying to purchase. So we do want to encourage people um, that you know, to fill in the information and give as much, you know, um, details about yourselves that you think are important that customers might be interested in. So, of course, it varies a lot between our vendors even about how much information is there. But I do think if a, if a customer is particularly looking for something, um, it is good to have that information um, available to them on the site. So, um, you might notice here this Andrea's Test Produce. This is going to be the one that we are um, uh, using as a sample today and I will show you how to log into that. So that's my fake producer right now that we can kind of walk through and I'll show you um, show you how that looks in a minute. But uh, then the customer can you know go through this and if they're interested in shopping now they can decide if they're looking for Bounty Box subscription which is our North Arrow Fresh um, CSA. Um, we also do a la carte or kind of like an online shopping cart throughout the season so they could shop there or they could um, go to the curbside market and then it'll link to um, showing hopefully um, showing them uh, exactly which products are available for for the uh, curbside of course contact us like i said i've also updated this so that it's um, welcoming to the north Iowa fresh and the curbside market partnership um, um, vendors and customers so um, going ahead for, I guess, talking a little bit more. So that's sort of on the side of what the customer is going to see. Um, I know that um, after you uh, get off this call, you'll receive an email and you'll get information about how to uh, subscribe or become a member of this program. And you'll get a form that looks something like this. So this is a North Iowa Fresh version of the JOT form that you're going to get. And it's gonna ask you a lot of questions about your farm, about um, uh, your contact information. And that is because we're going to populate the producer um, profile for you initially so that you, when you go in, um, your information will be in there and then we're gonna give you a login and password so that you can access um, and update things in the future. So, but we are gonna ask you for all this information uh, and, and update that. Here is where you'll also put in your thumbnail picture you can upload your pictures right into here um, and then talk, also we'll ask you some questions about logistics about which markets you are participating in if there's anybody else you want to have access to the site um, and things like that so um, don't you know we'll you'll be able to work through all of this once we get done here so I'm not going to go into the weeds on what's in the form but um, just know that that's kind of what you're going to expect to see and what you're going to need to fill out when it comes time uh, for you to decide if you're going to be part of the project. So um, let's see, as for the producers, so um, like I said, I'll go back to the homepage here. 
um, when you come and you want to log in, once you've decided you're part of the project, you want to, um, we have your, your um, profile created, you're one of the producers listed on the Meet Your Producer page, then if you want to go in and list your products or update your profile or um, you know, uh, anything like that related to the sales aspect, um, you're going to need to log in. So you'll need to go to the very bottom of our site here and there's a little button down here, uh, producer login. So keep in mind this producers need to go to this little button on the bottom. If you're a customer, there's this little person icon, um, this little white person in the top bar here. That's where you go to, sh to shop or log in as a customer. Um, but if you're a producer, you go way to the bottom here and you click on producer login. And then I'm going to go to my fake um, producer here and show you kind of what you're going to see on the other side of the software. So once you're logged in as a producer, um, you'll, you're going to get this dashboard um, and it's going to uh, indicate uh, obviously uh, who you are and which markets you're participating in. And then if you go to settings, that's the first place to look. Um, Settings, we're going to try and populate all of this to, for you from that jot form that you are filling out. So we'll have that in, information already in there. But like I said, if there's any time that you want to make adjustments, change a phone number, uh, update who the checks go to, um, anything like that, this is all stuff you have access to do on your own in the future. So we just want, because this project is coming up quick, we want you to get um, a head start and not have to navigate all of this on your own. Um, we're going to get you started that way. So when you go to the info page, again, this is going to be the information we asked for um, for the about us from this. If you go back here to the website where it said about us and practices, um, that's where that information is going to be um, right now. I don't know why on both sides of the software, it's not using the same terminology, but here it talks about farm description. But if you're not a farmer and you're selling soaps or or dog treats or something like that, you would just put your business description here. And then when it says farm practices, um, you would put in, you know, maybe um, something related to how you make your products or any details that you're in for, uh, you think your customers might wanna know about that. So um, don't get hung up if you're not a farmer, um, don't get hung up on the terminology back on this back end. Predominantly this, this software is used by food hubs and, um, CSA businesses and these types of um, direct-to-consumer online sales for farms, but um, it's not exclusive to that in our case. So um, yes, just so you know that. Uh, Logistics-wise, um, we're, again, we're going to have this filled out for you, whichever um, markets that you're involved in um, and that sort of thing and information of where your pick list is going to go to. So. And you, like I said, you can also add extra users. So if you know that your, um, your you know, wife and husband both uh, want to be able to access the system or an employee or somebody like that that's going to help pull the orders, you may want to have multiple people be able to access the system. Um, let me see. Okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about is a little bit related to the products. And if you want to list a product for sales, how do you do that? So again, most of your um, controls are going to be on this black bar. So we're just going to move up and look at the product one here. Uh, oops, I'm going to delete this because I'm going to come back to those red skin potatoes in a second. So, um, so this is this is a really uh, great area for you to prepare for the season. So because uh, we all know we get into the middle of the season and it gets busy and you are thinking I I hardly have time to get my listing up before the market opens for sales. Um, this is a way that you can be prepared for the season. So I would encourage you to upload or um, populate this section as fully as you can in anticipation of what you're going to sell throughout the whole season. And if you do that ahead of time, it's going to save you a lot of headache later. Um, so you can, in this section, put in all of the products that you think you might sell, even if you never sell them this year, if you think you might, um, go ahead and put them in here, set them up have them ready to go so that then it's, it's going to be a one click deal after that for during the week when you're busy and you're trying to quickly get your, your items listed on the, on the online sales. 
So the other reason is um, if you need to customize or make a product that didn't exist before in our North Iowa Fresh system. So like I mentioned, we're using this system already for produce, meats. Um, we've done a little bit of honey, some breads and things like that, but we haven't done much for other, not much for baked goods, jams and jellies, things like that we haven't done. So those items are not gonna exist in the system right now. Um, for the produce and those types of things, we have a global database where those products have been loaded already based on the fact that we've used them in the past. And you're gonna have a lot quicker time loading those into your profile than if you have to create a product from scratch. Um, a product from scratch also requires an um, administrator's approval because we have some naming, um, I guess, uh, standards and things like that so that products are listed in a consistent way. Um, the, the administrator does need to approve a new product, so we aren't, um, so that can take some time. So the best thing for you to do is first try and figure out or find out if your product has been used by North Isle Fresh in the past. Um, search for that product, and if it hasn't, um, then make a new product and just know that that's going to have to be approved. And that's the other reason why you don't want to leave this until the middle of the week, and you know your product needs to be listed by I don't know, Tuesday and you're, you know, trying to make products on Monday, like you can't guarantee, we can't guarantee that we're going to be in the system to approve those products in a short manner. So um, do it ahead, please. Um, so if you are looking for a product and it's a product like a produce product or a meat or something like that, and it's, there's a good chance that North Arrow Fresh has sold it before, you can go to this big blue button that says um, add product to sell. And that doesn't mean you're adding products to the storefront, it just means that you're adding a product that you intend to sell during the season. So you would click on that, and we're gonna use that red skin. Um, oops, I think you have to do potato red skin. Potato, see this is the naming. Potato, um, and then we're gonna go to uh, down here, red skin chemical free potato. So click on that, um, add that product. And so you can do multiple at, at one time. So if you know you're gonna do red skin chemical free and you're also gonna do sweet potatoes, you can add them both at once um, you can, or whichever other kinds that you might be interested in selling. So add those to your, into your products to sell. And then you'll see that you go in to the red skin potato and you'll see there's all these options. So the main thing is um, North Hour Fresh sold products, um, we sold them essentially bulk or bagged to grocery stores and restaurants and also now um, direct to consumer um, on our a la carte through the bounty box. But when you pull these up, you're going to get a bunch of options that maybe don't apply to farmers markets. And that's because the software hasn't um, been used uh, for farmers markets in the past. And we can, we can not really have we can maybe in some cases make some um, adjustments to these ahead of time for you, but there's a good chance you're gonna get in here and you're gonna have to change the type of base unit that you want to sell by um, and you're in order to you know, sell it in appropriate units for farmer's markets. So obviously uh, bulk cases of 25 pound um, potatoes is not relevant to farmer's markets most of the time. So you can delete out, oops, Delete out, oh, yeah, okay. Delete that one, you can delete, because um, if unless you have a certified scale, you're not gonna be able to do weight, um, sell by weight, so you can delete those out. So anyways, just go through and update it in a way that works for, um, for your uh, particular vendor um, needs. And for example, these uh, potatoes, a lot of, maybe, they're, maybe you're selling them by the quart. So instead of selling them by the pound, you're gonna sell them by the quart, change that, and you can change the unit name if you want as well. Maybe it, it'll let, oh, maybe it won't let me do, oh, you know why? Because last time I think I showed how to list a product. Oh, no, it's not in there. Well, in any case, you should be able to uh, delete out and change those. If you have, and again, if you have trouble with this as you get in, to um, doing this, then you will um, just reach out to us and we will um, help you with that. Oh, there you go. So you had to save it. So quart, I changed it to quart for farmer's market. You might say um, per quart as your unit name and you can adjust the price as, um, 
Yeah, yeah. You can, a lot of times they're going to give you some warnings, but it's mostly just because of um, the North Hour Fresh had some stuff in the past. So it'll, it'll be customized to your um, vendor there so I can save changes. So there you go. Per quart, you can adjust your pricing um, and things like that. So I didn't, again, you can see that even though we're populating things for you, we're giving you the uh, um, name of the product, we're giving you a, usually a picture that you don't have to dig around finding pictures by any means. You can update those if you want. You can select a different image um, and upload it to the, to the product. So if you have a custom image that you wanna use just of your product, you can certainly do that. But if you don't have time, or you don't have pictures of all these things in the first year, um, that is another benefit of using our North Iowa Fresh system is that that stuff is already there for you to take and update. Um, you can also um, add a tag tagline if you want to say, I don't know, best potatoes around or uh, sweetest melons or something like that. You can put that in there. You can just, you can change this up and offer something unique about the type of or the variety that you are of red skin potatoes that you are growing. So this, like I said, it's, you get some basic information pre-populated, but it's all customizable so that you can make it your own. So we're going to, oh, we're going to um, talk about pricing a little bit um, because, um, here, right, we'll go back to this here. Some prices will be pre-populated into there um, based on North Iowa Fresh prices. And the unit price is the price that the um, producer is going to receive at the end of the, um, the month when we send you a check for your, what you sold during the curbside uh, or at, on the curbside market during that um, time or that month. Um, so you do want to make sure you're uh, looking at the unit price and updating that to be accurate to what you are charging for your products. So you need to keep in mind that this is a, um, we're trying to make this into a sustainable project. And yes, it is grant funded in the first two years. Um, that helps us to get all, all the time that we've um, spent to, um, you know, coordinate this market, bring it together, figure out all the logistics. Um, it helps us to pay for software in the first couple of years um, and things like that. That's what, you know, the grant is helping with. Um, but in the long run, the sustainability of the project um, relies on how much we sell through the project. And all we can do is make projections at this point. We don't know how many of you are going to participate. We don't know how many customers are. And we have had to base our, um, I guess our plan based on other markets that are doing a similar type of project that we are doing. So we're, we can base it a little bit off of North Iowa Fresh and our a la carte projects. We can base it a little bit off of other um, direct to consumer online um, systems like the Iowa Food Co-op that operates out of the Des Moines area. Um, but basically, we have to make a best guess as to how or what the cost of running this project is over the long run. And even though we have some funding now, um, that is not going to, you know, sustain us into the future if we want this project to keep going after the grant runs out. So we have, um, what we need you to do when you're looking at the pricing here is um, you have to think about the fact that um, the project is doing quite a bit of marketing for you and that these are guaranteed sales that have happened before you even show up at market. Um, and they may, you know, um, you have to, you know, bag them up, but then you drop them off at the curbside um, uh, tent, and then the rest is left up to the coordinator to, to aggregate and do all of that work. So um, I, I would suggest that you want to think about uh, the prod or the pricing as um, you need to price it lower than what you would sell at your market. So you're, I wouldn't say exactly a wholesale pricing, but something like about, 17% um, or so lower than what you would sell at the farmer's market at your booth, because obviously at the booth, you're spending the time sitting there, you're setting up your own table, you're setting up all the display and all of that stuff. And then we are going to also charge about a 17% um, margin onto the customer for the convenience of being able to shop online, um, pick up at the curbside, not have to walk through market. It saves them time and people are willing to pay for that convenience. So it's sort of like a split. The, part, the, the producer is um, a, taking a little bit less than what they would charge at the booth, but we're also charging the customer more so that, um, you know, that they, you know, get that ease of being able to just show up. So um, the full, um, if you need more explanation on how that all works, um, please let me know. But basically, um, that's 
that's how we part, uh, figured out the margin is to be able to um, balance that between the producer and the um, paying customer. So, so keep that in mind. You want to be sure that once your product gets online and is on the storefront, that it's still in a reasonable where people will still buy it. And we know that people are willing to pay for that convenience. So they're willing to pay more than what they um, would, you know, um, if they had to come to market, but you know, we still can't have them get priced so high that people just won't buy it. So, um, and we're, we're gonna talk a lot more about this when we get into the um, second training if you sign up as a producer. So, um, like, okay, so as I said, you'll wanna uh, populate this as best you can. If you go in and you try and find a product, um, I don't know, say, um, Oh, maybe butter was, uh, maybe I used that before. We have buttermilk bread and we have butter lettuce, but we don't have butter. If you wanted to sell butter and it's not listed in all of the options that we've already gave um, for North Arbor Fresh, you can create a new product and you will have to like create a name, um, a base unit and all the same stuff, but you'll also have to upload an image, do everything like from the beginning. Um, and this is the time when your administrator will have to approve it. So these are the ones for sure you don't want to leave till the last minute. Um, and, but it, that's another way of adding a product. So, uh, and then once you're ready to list, if you, uh, get, and we're into a, um, period and you are ready to list your product for sale on the, on the site, um, unfortunately, because we are, um, a Friday or a Saturday and a Tuesday market and today is Monday, it's our day where everything is rolling over. So you can't see exactly what I'm going to talk to you about right at this second because it, everything is um, closed right now for, for customers. Um, but usually there's a button over here, um, a, a plus button. It's like a, a cross. Um, and so normally you would go in there, you would press that button um, that doesn't exist. And then it would ask you how many of those particular products you wanna list. So if you wanted to list, um, 10 bunches of asparagus, you put those up in 20 bags of, or 20 quarts of potatoes and whatever, you could list those all and they would show up here under availability, um, which doesn't show up right now because it's closed. Um, but um, again, we'll talk through this a lot more if you actually are um, ready to um, become a member. And then after, um, after you've done that, we have, um, we have two to three days close to 72 hours for the markets for the customers to purchase. Um, they will get some notifications through our Facebook and all of our marketing to let them know the cart's open. They'll go in, they'll make their purchases. And at any time you can come in here and you can look and see what you have sold already so that you can help plan you know, your harvest or whatnot. Um, but at, at 24 hours before your market start time, so if it's Saturday at 9 a.m. is the Clear Lake Farmer's Market opens, um, Friday at 9 a.m. you'll get a pick ticket. And the pick ticket, I did um, make an example. Um, where is this example? Here it is. Of what your pick ticket will look like. This was one from One Step at a Time Gardens back in June. Um, but it will break down um, how, what you need to bring in that box that Jody referenced to our curbside tent. So um, if you need to bring beets, it'll tell you what selling unit your beets were. Um, it's best for you if you have one or two different selling units so that you don't have like a have to figure out a whole bunch and that's less mistakes also on that on the side of the aggregator. So it's best if you have one selling unit for each of your products and if a product if a customer wants more than one quart of potatoes, rather than giving them an option of buying a four quart, just let them put four quantity in the and then they you give them four one quarts or something like that. So Keep it as simple as you can. And again, we'll walk through this more later. But uh, anyways, this was what your, your um, pick ticket will look like. And it'll give you the breakdown of what you have to bring, how much of each one, um, how much you're, you're making, and then a total of uh, how much you made um, that, that um, period, sales period. So it's pretty uh, straightforward. It, sh it should be kind of like a check checklist for you of how to pack your boxes. Um, for the curbside, but actually the, um, when you go, when this is active, um, it'll also give you, uh, at this pick ticket, it'll also give you an option here of a pack, oh, here it is, packing list. And so you can also um, pick, 
pick which period we're in and then um, print out a packing list. Or you can do it by your phone where you can actually click off the items that you've already packed so that you know you have them all. So um, I think that is um, most of what I wanted to tell you about um, for, yes, for the software. And I mean, I'm happy to answer any other questions that you have at the end of the presentation, but I will stop my screen here and let Marie bring back the, um, the slideshow so we can um, continue through with that. So I guess once she brings it up, I'll just um, go through it real quick and I, I don't think I've missed anything, but okay, this was just your summary of um, the, what the customers see, then your login information, how to add your products and um, yep, you can go on a little bit of summary about pricing, how you price your products and why we need to price them um, so that we, ha we do have a margin to run this program in the future. Um, so that's there. Um, customizing and adjusting everything and then can go on um, creating new products again don't leave that till the last minute and um, oh yeah that is a good point the last point here um, when you do sign up and we get you into the system when we send you your um, welcome to the North Iowa Fresh um, local food marketplace local food marketplace does have a really nice producer manual um, that gives you information of how to do all of this stuff we just talked about. So um, it's the software company version of training, I guess. So it'll be a reference guide that you'll want to kind of keep the link to or, or download it or something for future reference so that if you need to go in later and update things and or list products, um, it should walk you through that as well. So, and then, um, yeah, once you've listed everything, it'll go um, on, it'll tell you when it's going live. Um, you can update throughout the period. If you if you put in, you have 10 bunches of asparagus and you go out into the garden and you're looking and you're like, oh, I really think I'm gonna have like 20. You can go back in and update that and um, add more anytime during when that, when that period is open. The other way is if you get out into the field and you realize, oh, so it didn't really you know, have as much sun as I expected. Maybe I'm not gonna have 20, 10. You can take those off too, as long as they have not sold. So you want to be a little careful. I'd be um, kind of cautious on your listing and almost a little underestimate because like you could always bring the extra to the market if, it, if you have extra and sell it there. Um, but we don't want to have to be telling customers that things are not available once they've purchased it. So I'd say be a little cautious about your um, uh, projecting, project a little lower than you expect. And, and like I said, you could always add more or um, take the extra with you on market day. Um, rather than us having to go back and refund customers, which is not going to be very good for our, um, I guess, customer relationships. So, and producers will get payments once a month coming from North Iowa Fresh at the end of the month of all their sales during that month. So, let's see. Um, vendor requirements. Am I this is Jody. Out? This Jody. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna <laughs> <Get> done. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, see what all the fun talking about the technology, and we're gonna pass it over to Jody to talk about vendor requirements. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Andrea. All right. So um, again, some of this has been touched on earlier, but what it takes for you to be a vendor and be part of this project is you must be a paid market vendor in um, one of our four pilot markets. You can only participate in this project on the days that you plan to attend the market. So if you're an occasional vendor, you cannot list product for the week that you will not actually be at the market. After this um, training, we're gonna send you out a producer manual that's going to have um, everything that we have talked about today um, and more. So it is really your guide to being part of this project. We do require that just like farmers markets that you do have liability insurance to be part of this project. Andrea talked about the pricing structure and we, um, one of the things that you'll just have to check off, um, check the box is that you agree to the curbside market pricing structure and that you know you are going to um, keep in mind the prices that you're listing and be mindful of that 
in terms of those additional costs that are associated with this project. Some of you may already have an online system going on and that people can purchase your products other ways than in person, um, and that's okay, but we do ask that you don't have an online system that competes with this one in terms of people picking up your product at farmer's markets. We, um, if for example, you are a meat vendor, um, every license that you would need to sell meat at a farmer's market, you'll need to have to sell your meat as part of this project too. And we will ask for um, any license that you guys do have. We'll wanna keep that on file as part of our project. It is recommended that you have some kind of food safety training, whether that has been um, the FISMA training, the Food Modernization Safety Act training that, um, I know many of you have participated through Iowa State and what they have been offering. Some of you may have in the past done some gap training. Um, any food safety training that you have had, again, for our records, we'll ask you to upload that and we'll wanna keep that on file. Again, it's not required, but it is highly recommended. And in your producer manual, there will be a link to um, slide, or modules, I should say, that Iowa State University has online, and particularly like modules one and two would be very applicable to some basic food, um, food safety. It's also recommended um, that you um, have a water test, and again, not required, but recommended, and if you have had this, that you also upload that so we can keep it as part of our file. And again, that you're keeping um, food safety records um, as part of, again, your normal farm operations. I know many of you already do this, but it is recommended as part of this project too, that you would also do that. Okay, so next steps. Um, thank you all for joining. We're not done yet, but thank you for uh, joining us today. Along with the producer manual, you will receive a um, JOT form. And the JOT form is very similar to a Google form. Those of you who haven't used a JOT form, the JOT form just allows you to upload things directly into that form, like Andrea showed you. Um, if you're having trouble or you don't wanna upload into that form, it'll tell you right on that JOT form where you send all those additional information. So I will be the contact person for the Cedar Valley area, and Marie is going to be then, or yes, the contact person then for the uh, Mason City Clear Lake area. So <laughs> I think she was trying to get us to the chat form, which might not be <laughs> working. <laughs> well, it will work when you guys get it, but it's not working to share it on the screen. Um, we would ask you that as soon as possible, if you can complete that job form, if you know you are interested in participating in this project, if you could um, complete that ASAP, because everything in that form is going to give us all the information that we need to do the back end to get you in our site. Once you're in your site, our site, I should say, then you are ready to start listing those products. Some of you may choose to do that on your own, um, but some of you may want to, you will always, let me back up, you will always be required to do it on your own and that is your responsibility. But when you're getting started, some of you may want some additional help and we do have additional trainings coming up in May that will be very specific to vendors who are participating in this project. So a little bit more in detail, making sure that everybody is able to get those products up on the site and listed. So those are going to be May 5th, 1 to 3 p.m. or May 9th, 10 a.m. to noon. And again, they would be very similar trainings. We just wanted to offer them at different times. So again, can't stress enough just for our time purposes and getting everything up and running to complete those job forms as soon as possible. After this training also, we will send the slides out. We'll also send a recording and we'll also send a survey. So if you guys could send or complete this survey, which would just be a Google survey, it really helps with our data collection for our grant project and also to let us know what we missed in terms of teaching you guys just this overview of the project. Great, thank you, Jody. Um, so with that, we did wanna make sure you had our contact information for the project team. Um, it's on here, it'll be in the email that we send out as well, um, but know that you can reach out to any of us with questions. And like I said, with the pilot, we're doing the best we can to answer all the questions. So with that, it's Q&A time. 
Um, so we do have some questions that have come in through the chat that we want to address. We also had some questions that came in with um, completing your registration that we want to address. Um, so continue to use that chat and throw questions in there and we'll walk through as many as we have. So first I do want to just touch on the ones from registration. Um, so a couple of people asked about Cedar Falls Farmer's Market. So hopefully that was answered that that is hopefully in year two, but um, currently not a thing, but College Hill will be um, happening. Um, do, 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 do. As far as individual serving packages or um, other methods of sale or weight and things like that, I know that came up a couple of times. So we are basically an extension of the farmer's market, right? Where um, we need you, you as a vendor are responsible to follow all of the same rules and regulations that you would at farmer's market. So if you have a certain license that lets you sell certain ways, that's great. If you have a certified scale, then you can sell by weight. Um, if not, you sell by the each or um, by the appropriate weight or measure that's allowed without a scale. Um, for produce, we list those out in our vendor manual, but um, for baked goods and whatnot, you really need to dig into those regulations um, that are out there. We can um, certainly direct you to those if you're unsure where to find them, um, but the Iowa Department of Inspection and Appeals has some really um, great documents, food code to read up on that and what's allowed as far as individual packages and what that has to look like and labeling requirements, such like that. Yeah, Marie, can I jump in there real quick? Yes, that's please my, do. My piece. Um, I did forget to mention that that on those baked goods, just like you would like, like you would have to for that farmer's market, make sure that, that they are labeled especially with those allergen items and that would be in addition to then the curbside label that is going to show up with all of your stuff in one box as you drop it off to the curbside tent so i just wanted to clarify that piece of labeling those baked goods yes and yeah. jellies when in doubt label right <laughs> um because yeah we that's uh, honestly part of what we've been um, walking through the most right now is um, the regulations and licensure around this project and how it relates to farmers markets and especially with recent um, guidance for farmers markets and regulations as we've mentioned earlier on. But um, yes, it ultimately will fall back to you as the vendor. You are responsible for making sure that they're labeled correctly, that they're sold in proper weights and measures and that um, if you have a temperature controlled for safety product um, that you have your licensure as you're required to and that we are then aware of any <laughs> proper storage of that that needs to happen and can work with you to make sure that can happen on site. So um, with that will kind of jump into the questions that came in through the chat in order of how they came in. Um, Brandon was asking a great question about metric data from this program used to petition for Wi-Fi access, especially in rural areas um, for vendors, but as well as customers and what that looks like. Um, I definitely think that, I, I'll speak personally about anybody else, any of our team, feel free to jump in that. Um, yeah, for sure. We hope that anything that comes out of this project can be used um, as far as improving um, conversations, whether it's local, at the state, whatnot. Um, so if that has to do with Wi-Fi access, especially if you're worried about individual access participating as a vendor, um, originally our hope was certainly that you could then go to your local library or something like that to be able to update your products and things like that. Um, we'll work with you as best as we can, um, but we understand that that's a barrier and that's something we're just going to have to walk through together. But um, yeah, I mean, if there's folks that are looking to have that conversation on a statewide level, I think that's a great conversation to be had. Um, I don't know if anybody else wanted to jump in on that, but. Yeah, I think you said that well, yeah. Um, yeah, and one of the things, again, I forgot to mention in my part is one of the, is you would probably need a computer a couple times a week to be able to list the product and then also look up what those pick tickets are in terms of what you need to be bringing to the market for your order. 
Um, and again, our recommendation was using local libraries. However, we know that um, those are closed. Um, so we will work with individual vendors during this time as needed until we figure out more long-term solutions and maybe using that data, like you just said. Yeah, and the, um, the local food marketplace is fairly mobile friendly. I know I've used it on my phone and I've used it on my son's Kindle while on vacation one year. Um, of course, it's a little bit tricky because it's a small screen and you have to scroll across and up and down. And But I mean, it is doable if you have to do it on a phone, um, ideally using a, a desktop computer or a laptop or whatever is a lot. Um, you, like you could see the screen and everything. So it's a little easier, but it is, I mean, especially if you're going to be doing uh, product uploading um, and, and customizing, I'd recommend trying to get to a computer to do that. But on a weekly basis, just for listing products, um, that's, that kind of simple stuff can be done from a phone, so. Great, thanks. Hopefully that answers the question, Brandon, but feel free to comment if it doesn't. Um, Lisa mentioned connecting with the, per the person with refugees from Burma, so hopefully you all can connect. I think that was Sarah, maybe. Um, Kelly asked about labeling um, product by weight and the need for a certified scale, which I think we kind of went over, but um, yeah, making sure that if you had a cert certified scale, you can tell by weight. If you don't, you cannot legally. That's not us. That's I've been in the weights and measures team at the state. <laughs> so um, I do know that I believe, I mean, the barrier, of course, is the cost of the scale, but um, as far as the annual um, certification of the scale, I think it's $9. So if you have a scale and you just have been intimidated by the process of getting it certified, I think it's a fairly easy process, but I don't know what they're doing right now. Um, but in general, you, hmm? you can use your, uh, sorry, you can use the, uh, you know, each, like you mentioned, like if you're selling tomatoes or you're selling peppers to sell, price them by an each or melons. Um, I know that not all melons are exactly the same size, but you can come up with a pretty good average and average price um, for those, uh, which we do all the time for North Iowa Fresh. Or um, if you're, like we talked about that potato example, sell them by the quart or um, the pint or something like that. It's more of a dry measure um, that doesn't require this scale. So those things are things that are gonna need some adjustment in the profile because we do use a certified scale for North Iowa Fresh. And so a lot of our items are um, listed in the terms of weight. So there will be some adjustments that need to be made by the vendors that way. But um, yeah, if you need help with that, that's stuff I can walk you through too. Yeah, and we can, yeah, we can help with that. Or like we said, in the vendor, manual, like the second half of that manual, a list out all the different products and the recommended um, measure, if it's a dry weight measure or um, by the each or whatever that looks like for each individual product. For produce, um, not, I mean, meats, if you're a meat vendor, you know that you gotta be licensed, you gotta be regulated and all of that. It's sold by the weight, not the, the each and all of that. Um, and, uh, you know, baked goods and things like that. Um, so I had the question about filling out the quantity. I think Andrea went over that pretty well, um, but definitely we recommend listing what you know you have and um, especially knowing that you're going to be at market, um, thinking about that. I mean, if you have a product that you exclusively want to sell through curbside, that's fine. Um, but also know that, like balance that between the curbside listing and your, in your vendor space. Yeah, and again, I, we meant, I mentioned this before, but make sure you're a little bit conservative so that you can fulfill these orders. It's gonna be very important for this project's success for us to be able to continue, continually fill the orders of people that make place orders online. If we have to refund people or um, give them credit for product that didn't show up on the day of market, it's just not gonna show you know, that we have our act together very well with this project. And it's gonna be very hard for customers to have very much um, confidence in our ability to fill those orders. So be conservative and keep in mind that you are gonna have, you know, wanna have some stuff at your booth. And so kind of, I guess you're gonna have to get a little used to balancing that and, um, and that sort of thing. And also I'd say quality, I don't, we didn't really talk about quality much, but 
um, Jody sort of alluded that a lot of these customers might be um, ones that are used to maybe shopping online or purchasing um, online stuff from a grocery store. And so they're going to expect a pretty high level of quality. Um, whereas farmers market vendors are, I would say, more flexible to strange looking products, maybe just a slightly deformed products or blemishes and stuff like that. They come to your market booth and they, they see you and they know that you um, grew it and they're like, oh, that's all right. I don't care if it has a little, you know, bat, um, you know, rough spot on one side or, you know, something a little bit off. But the, some of these customers that are accustomed to the grocery store and are not used to farmers markets, um, I would err on the side of being, you know, a little bit higher on the quality for those um, products coming through the curbside project. Um, just so that people don't get something that they don't expect um, or aren't used to seeing. Uh, and just again, for customer service and for the, you know, follow up, so the customers come back next time. We want to make sure our quality is very, very high. So, Right. Or labeled as such. If it's yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's true. I mean, we could have some um, items on the website we could list as well. I mean, in the produce world, we call them seconds. I would say we might want to call them uglies or something like that for the customer. We can make categories for those types of products if they're seconds. But if unless you have a lot and you know we do we do have boxes of seconds tomatoes that we sell as canning tomatoes or things like that but unless you have i would recommend for the most part those are things that you might want to just keep for your booth so you can explain to the customer that everything's you know fine um you know you know taste and everything like that wise um uh, and then that's a, easier for a vendor to explain in person than trying to explain that online sales. So, I mean, not that it can't be done. Um, it, you could definitely put in your description and you could sell something uh, for a lesser price if it's considered to be an ugly or something like that. But um, if, unless you really need to move those products and I would maybe reserve that for your, for your booth. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Good. Um, Chris asked about pictures, which I know is perfect. We did that. Um, to do, to do. So could curbside market be extended past the market season? Um, I think that's a really great conversation in general. I, I don't know that we've, we've been so focused on getting it up and rolling here for market season that we haven't talked about that as a team. Um, but I do know that some of our areas do have, um, winter markets for sure. Um, and I know we piloted some here in this area and I think you guys have as well. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think that's a great conversation for us to have if curbside can move into the off season um, in support of those markets as well, for sure. Thanks for the question. Um, yeah, so Chris asked the question about, this is curbside pickup only, um, farmer's market still happening. Yes, um, thanks to our, the Friday declaration and guidance, farmer's markets are allowed to open. So that means that our markets are all scheduled to open around the first one was the 16th of May, two of them on the 16th, 19th, and then um, College Hill starts at the beginning of June. But um, yeah, we do require that if you're selling through curbside that you be set up as a vendor on site um, with a little asterisk there as we wait on news about some of our artisan vendors and if they're allowed to sell through curbside right now, um, but they're not due to that. Um, recommendation or the, the recommendations and declaration that only f food and farm products are allowed to be sold at farmers markets. So of course we walk through that, but um, yes, this is all for curbside pickup in general for the training. Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> so I think what you're saying is we're hoping that we will be able to allow all farmers market vendors on curbside, even if they, are temporarily not at market. Yes. Um, the, because of the new declaration, they're saying that we can only do food and farm products, which is we're working on defining exactly what that means. But we're hoping that because the vendors are not actually physically going, you know, for those types of things that are like a, a craft product or something, if you wanted to list those, we, we think that would still be fine to do on curbside if you just drop them off at the booth and then our, uh, our um, aggregator uh, staff member will coordinate those into the bags and for the customer. Um, 
but stay tuned. So that is our current understanding and things are changing by the day, as you know, so. Yeah. Um, I also have one other question here about um, vendor payments and whether they could be deposited directly into a bank account. Um, we currently are not doing that, but I think we possibly could. So let me check into that deposit options um, and see if those can be just directly deposited, um, you know, if we go through the process of getting that information. And um, we use, uh, North Island Fresh um, uses a small little bank in uh, Belmont. So, and we have had a few instances where, um, you know, the, some of the technology of the bigger banks is not as user-friendly in Belmont. So um, that might be a glitch, but I will check into that and get back to you. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, there is a, also a question about FMNP and veggie vouchers um, being accepted through this program. And um, I will throw in their EBT SNAP uh, with double up food books, all that good stuff. Um, so where we are right now is we want to get this pilot up and rolling. So we're focusing on um, credit card, credit debit transactions currently. Um, but we definitely have it on our radar to work to make this a program that's accessible for everybody, right? That's our ultimate goal. But um, as, you, as you know, if you are a part of any of those projects, you know that um, there's certain steps that you have to walk through and um, pre-sales being one of the limiting factors on some of them. So we're definitely looking at it. We're working to look at that, but no promises that it'll be in the near future that we can accept that, but we do hope to eventually be able to. Yeah. Um, Chris asks, why so long to receive payments? <laughs> Sorry? Uh, so I, we talked about vendor payments being on a monthly oh. basis. Oh, okay. I see it now. Mm -hmm. Um, Mostly because that's how North Hour Fresh is currently doing it. And um, like we are, when we wrote the grant, we are dovetailing everything into our current system and that's how it was being done. Um, again, that could be something to discuss if that's an issue for a number of people. Um, we can, you know, kind of look into that as needed, but for now that's just kind of the process that we've been using and um, we have to run a report and then maybe if we go to something like the direct deposits that if that's a feasible option, that would be maybe more uh, practical to do more uh, uh, frequent payments to the producers, but um, with the checks and having, having to have our um, bookkeeper writing checks um, and with the increased number of vendors, uh, I'm not, I don't know for sure, but please, if other people have that same concern about the time um, for payments, um, we can certainly look into that. But again, I think that also comes back down to how many vendors we have and how much sales there are. If we're getting a lot of sales and a lot of uh, participation, it might be definitely feasible to do more frequent sale or payments. But if, you know, if it, if it starts off slow and it, you know, isn't that um, much of, um, you know, accumulated sales, then we might just stay with the monthly. So to be determined to be fun, fun things about new projects. Yeah, there's a lot of details. I'm sure you can all appreciate there's lots of details all the time that we're learning every day. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't think about. So, um, and we had I, something that Andrea said, I want to echo too, is that if you have thoughts or concerns about participating or extra questions, like make sure to talk to us about it because we want this to work for everybody um, the best we can. Um, so, if you have a certain concern or a barrier that you have to participating, let us know. And uh, yeah, we because we're kind of making this up as we go and we're trying to anticipate as much as we can based on our knowledge of farmers markets, because we all work closely with at least one farmers market in our region, um, either on the board or as a staff member working in farmers markets and stuff like that. So um, we were pretty, tightly woven into the farmer's markets, but also this is brand new and trying to integrate into the North Iowa Fresh system. While it does, it's profitable, or um, it helps with the cost. Um, there are some logistical things that, um, you know, just trying to incorporate a new set of customers into a system that exists already and things like that. It's all stuff we're kind of 
trying to see if it works. And that's, I guess, the point of a pilot project is we're working through all these kinks and we'll see if it works in year one and year two and then decide on, um, you know, what kind of changes have to be made as we go along, so. Yeah, and I would add to that too, we talked about all the great marketing things that we have for this project. Um, and we are getting ready to launch all of that, but we do also want to make sure that we have vendors participating in the project too. So if we can get vendors signed up ASAP, that makes us feel a little bit more confident on advertising this to our potential future customers too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're a huge part of that. <laughs> this, this system literally does not exist if we don't have vendors. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, David asked a great question, Andrea, about the um, seasonal chef's meal kits. Yeah, so while the seasonal chef meal kit is also a fun grant project, um, and it's also in a pilot year, and this is the first year for it, um, it's a North Iowa Fresh, um, I guess, experiment to see if there, well, we know there's interest from people to have some meals ready to, ready to prepare meals like the, um, you know, the Hello fresh and blue apron, things like that. But our concept is a little bit more just letting or kind of helping people to use some of the products that are available locally that they may not be as familiar with. So if you look at the menu items, you might see things like eggplants and kohlrabi and things like that. We know that people know how to use the basic things, but this is trying to expose people to a more diversity of what's available in North Iowa. Um, not only in produce, but also in um, what else can you get from North Iowa Fresh, like meats and honey and things like that, um, that have, um, you know, other local uh, connections. So right now it's very preliminary. Um, there's only actually one meal of, like, well, I guess there's two meals available each month. And um, most, sub you would subscribe kind of like a CSA where you would get one meal per month and you can choose from one of the two options that month. I have had one person who did subscribe to two subscriptions so they could get both, like all eight of our meals. Um, so that is an option, but it's not a comprehensive system in the same way as a Hello Fresh or something like that. It's more of a complimentary um, educational tool for us to kind of um, teach people more about what's available and, and help people to use products that they maybe are less comfortable preparing in their own kitchen and kind of show them what to do with those products. So, um, so I hope that helps. Um, you can uh, send other questions if that wasn't very clear. So. And uh, I know Dave was from the Cedar Valley area. So I just wanted to also point oh. out that this is new to the Cedar Valley and really the farmer's market project is a starting point. And we're hoping that this system, um, that we can use it for other projects like North Iowa Fresh has, whether it would be something like this or possibly then even branching out to wholesale buyers too, like they do with their, their, um, their North Iowa Fresh site too. So lots of possibilities um, after we uh, see how it goes with farmers markets and where we can expand from there. And yes, yay for good partnership and learning from each other too, right? Uh, Matt asked about the membership fee um, once that applies in year two. Yeah, so that's a good question. Um, I know we've talked about what that looks like and we're kind of wanting to evaluate from year one and what our costs are and all of that. Um, we've talked about maybe $50 range, um, but don't want to commit to anything <laughs> until we again shake out those prices. So um, I don't know, team. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, all of this, like I talked about earlier, is sort of a bit of a guessing game. All we can do is guess based on what other um, other other groups um, have done and how the costs. You no, know, it would be an annual. That'd be an annual, annual <laughs> once a year. Sorry, I got distracted by that question, but um, yeah. So we're gonna evaluate. I mean, we the one thing we don't want to have to do is make our prices. Um, you know go up a lot. Um, so we're trying to kind of set a price that we feel is going to cover our costs in year three um, so that c consumers become, you know, familiar with those prices. We don't want it to jump, you know, 20% in year three. And then all of a sudden people are like, you know, what happened here? We, you know, we're buying something for one price and all of a sudden it's a whole bunch of more expensive. So we're trying to set something that's reasonable um, that 
consumers and it works for everyone, consumers and producers, but also can keep this thing rolling when there is no grant funding. So the monthly, um, the monthly fee, like um, for the first year, we really, we know that this is a learning thing. It's a learning thing for us and it's a learning thing for you. And there's going to be weird things that come up that we didn't anticipate. And there's going to be, you know, maybe delays sometime in getting responses because we don't know the answer. So we don't want to, you guys kind of get a freebie if you join this year because all that stuff is going on. Um, but in the future, we do want investment from the producers that do sign up to be part of the program. So like we, if we're putting a bunch of money into advertising, we know there's going to be producers listing stuff on the site. Um, because the other bad thing is if people start to buy into this and they see our marketing and they show up at the site and there's nothing for them to buy, it only takes one or two times. I, I can tell you this from North Isle Fresh. Um, because we piloted our build your own box last year and it only takes one or two times when a customer comes on and they don't have enough stuff for them to buy that they stop looking to buy there and it's they're just going to go back to their regular grocery shopping um, at this you know grocery store so we need to be pretty confident that this you know that there's stuff there for people to buy so yeah and I mean as we've talked about as a whole I mean, yeah, we're, we want to work with you all. We want to make this work. This is not meant to be a profitable experience for um, us <laughs> as the project. Um, hopefully it's profitable for, as you, for you as a vendor, being able to have an additional sales stream. But um, yeah, so we don't want anybody walking away from this thinking that we're trying to skim off a bunch of money and then put it in another pot. Like everything that's rolling through this process would be supportive of the project, supportive of those costs, again, to make it as sustainable as possible. But um, there's nothing worse than getting all of you and all of our customers in a great system at the end of year two, and then year three, it's we're not able to be able to have an on-site coordinator, for example, to do all the aggregation and then not able to offer it again. So um, that's where that's coming from. Yes, so I guess I can yeah. take a stab at this next question. Um, yeah. Matt was asking about like at at uh, farmers markets, the pricing is not uniform between producers. Um, I guess we have to look at this as your online storefront or your online booth. Um, we're not going to be able to regulate if people are pricing things differently. Um, you have to think about what it, the value of the product is to you and price it so that you make enough to make make it worth you growing that product. Um, as same as at farmer's market. I mean, it is obviously people shop around at farmer's market. They walk down the aisles and look at what people are pricing. And then they, um, sometimes they, I don't know, like the look of your booth set up better and they come back and buy from you. Sometimes it's the price, maybe it's the look of your product. So I would just recommend that you do a good job with your producer profile online. You do a good job if you have, you know, a unique product, like a, if we're talking carrots, if it's rainbow carrots, go ahead and upload a nice picture of your own carrots and maybe the next person's won't be as nice if they're charging less. But other than that, we can't, it's just impossible like for us to be able to regulate that kind of thing, just like we don't at market. So I guess it's um, going to come down to the consumer um, making the choice. And if they know you or if, if you present well on, on your products and give a nice description, then they may choose, you know, the more expensive one anyway so. so yeah and I think that's important to hit home too is that your profile I mean as you saw it's, it's tied to you so if you're buying red shed carrots you're going to know you're buying red shed carrots and especially if they're a regular customer um, they're going to see that that quality they're going to know who they bought it from and then hopefully go back to you um, or vice versa if if they buy from you and they don't appreciate the quality or they think the price was too high they're not going to do it just like they would at farmers market so um, we're we've been trying to make sure that's something we liked about the system was that it is tied to the vendor it's not like an aggregated you're just going to go on and buy carrots, um, nothing wrong with that, but that's not what this system is for. It's meant to be your storefront, just like, or the vendor booth at the farmer's market. Um, which reminds me, I did want to touch on something that came up in our last training, um, was the online competition piece. And I think um, Trudy did a great job talking about it. But just to re reiterate that again, like if you have an online store in um, and you do online sales other places, we encourage that. We think that's great. 
Um, what we just don't want to see is we want to see the success of this program again. We don't want to see somebody trying to create another online sales system for the farmers markets, doing an aggregated, you know, sales situation um, in competition when we're trying to make sure we're working with everybody to make this work. Um, so definitely, if you have your own online sales system, we're not asking you to stop that by participating in that in this project. We just want to make sure that um, all goes well and that all is clear <laughs> with anybody who goes to shop through curbside market. So, um, yeah. Any other questions out there? I think we covered them all from the application and I don't know if there were, those were some of the ones that came up from my, from our previous conversations. Love it. Thanks, Chris. We're excited. <laughs> Hopefully you're with us. <laughs> we're, um, yeah. The amount of time and energy this has taken, especially with the additional regulations stepping through all of that, we're beyond excited to get this up and rolling. Um, and which I'm sure hopefully you all are as well and excited for farmers market season to start. Excited and nervous. How about that? <laughs> all right. Well, I guess watch for your uh, emails for those items that Jody said, and then feel free to reach out to us after you get off if you think other questions or when you're going through application and sh and share this with other people that weren't on today. We did do a training, um, what was it, a week ago Saturday, so we had a big group, like about this size, maybe a bit bigger on the first call, so lots of people um, have interest and in, but there's probably still other ones out there that are looking for, you know, a way to sell. Um, so feel free to share this out with them too. Yes. Yeah. The more the merrier. And again, uh, the, as those questions come up, as you reflect and you think of things, shoot them to us. Um, Cause we're stronger by you guys asking us questions and working with us to make this, the system work. So, and Chris said, yeah, think of it like a shopping mall. A lot of different stores, every store have a different price, farmer's market, same thing. Um, yeah, we know everybody has slightly different products, different quality, different prices. That's the uh, customers like choice we find. So, um, and we wanna encourage that. So yeah, awesome. All right. It's not like last chance for questions because again we're always available but in a group setting <laughs> here we are and um we hope that you sign up and that you join us on our may trainings um to really dig into the back end of the system further thank you karen and everyone for joining us on this call today and get out and enjoy this gorgeous day that we have and yes thank you for everything you all do too we appreciate it <laughs>